my name is Chuck, and um, I live here in Colorado Springs. I'm actually a native here, and um, I was yeah I went to elementary school here at Audubon, then East Junior, then Wasson, and uh, then went on to college, and um, later I joined a, a job with the city of Colorado Springs here, and. Um, I always wanted to be part of the Navy um, because of the influence of my, my, my father. And um, so I had an opportunity to go to Pensacola um, Officer Candidate School. And uh, at that time, they had a, a program where you could make a decision. Do you want to go to reserves? You know, after you get your commission, you want to go to reserves in the Navy or active duty? So I already had a job with the city, and so I thought, well, maybe I could do two careers simultaneously. So I uh, chose the Navy Reserve and uh, served in that for about 24 years. And um, it was an extremely good experience. And um, yeah, I think my, my dad was real proud of my decision. And uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity of doing two careers. and. And experiencing more, I think it really amplified my life and my life experiences even more with that decision. My parents uh, grew up in the Depression, and uh, that had an influence on me. But, uh, the stories they told about growing up um, in, a, in a poverty situation. Um, my mom lived near uh, the train tracks downtown here in Colorado Springs. She grew up as a little girl here as well. And um, she told me how she wore cardboard in her shoes um, because her shoes had holes in them. And she lived near the train track and she would throw rocks at the train conductor and uh, engineer of the train. So they would throw coal back at her and then she'd gather up the coal and take that coal into her house to heat her house. She shared a lot of stories like that, which you know, because they're a local here in Colorado Springs, I meant more to me. Um, and I can drive by that house and bring back all those um, memories and how she pointed those things out to me. Um, my father um, was born in Toledo, Ohio, but they came out here because uh, his father had tuberculosis. So during that time, if you're familiar with the Colorado history, a lot of people from all across America came to Colorado for the dry air um, to help with tuberculosis. And his father um, died when uh, my dad was five. Um, and uh, so my father grew up here, uh, worked at Alexander Film, which is over on the Bad Avenue here. And uh, he also served in the Navy um, during World War II and Korea. And he had a lot of stories. Um, some people are... are hesitant about telling their stories about war and experiences, but my dad uh, really shared a lot with me and I, I greatly appreciated uh, those details and, um, you know, willingness to share those, those stories. Um, gave me a great appreciation of people in the Navy and um, my uncles, uh, they were in World War II also, and he was a prisoner of war. He was shot down. So there were some interesting stories on that side of the family as well. Well, Colorado Springs is an Air Force town and everything's Air Force. Um, it's also an Army town, so I wanted to do something different. So actually, <laughs> when I was in college, on April Fool's Day, I uh, signed up for the Marine Corps. Um, and my, I told my parents, I caught them off guard, and they didn't believe me at first because it was April Fool's Day, but I wanted to be a pilot. I got washed that out because my eyesight was changing uh, rapidly, so that didn't work out well. But my father um, had a very robust career in, in the Navy, and um, so, in fact, he, uh, it was very unique that he survived two sinkings. So, yeah, his stories influenced my decision. In the Navy, again, it's very unique for Colorado Springs. I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps. I love the ocean. I love being out at sea. Um, and the Navy had a different program where 
In the reserves, we were very independent. We didn't deploy as a whole unit. We deployed just as an individual. So I could sign up for a year in Iraq or a year in Afghanistan or, you know, six months in Netherlands or, you know, six months in Korea. And, um, and then being protected by federal law, I was always able to come back to my civilian job. So I'd do that for a while. And then after I got kind of bored with that, I thought, well, I, you know, I think I'll go to Belgium for a year. That sounds really good. Um, and some of those deployments, I could take my wife with me and, and sometimes uh, she'd just come visit. Um, so again, I, I lived, I think I lived two lives. It was, it was a fantastic opportunity. You know, I was very blessed. Well, my dad was, he didn't retire Navy, but he, he his uh, blood was true Navy. Uh, I woke up in the morning, I would deliver newspapers in the morning as a paper boy. And I, on Sunday mornings, I'd go back to sleep for about a half hour before everybody woke up for church. And my dad, every Sunday morning would come into my room blowing a bosun's pipe. If you're not familiar with the bosun's pipe, it's very high pitched between screeching fingernails across the chalkboard and the dog whistle, it, he would come in and blow the bosun's pipe and yell, uh, Reveille, Reveille, all hands on deck, you know, uh, sweepers, man your brooms, and swab all decks fore and aft. And I, I hear that every Sunday. I guess that was to energize a child to go to church in the morning. Um, and... Yeah, there were all kinds of stories. And, and then his vocabulary was so different. Uh, you know, instead of telling his, to his son, Chuck, did you lock the back door, you know, before we went to bed? Chuck, did you secure the hatch? You know, did you, you know, you know, hang up your, you know, your jacket and your cover, uh, you know, and up against the bulkhead. And I mean, he has all kinds of vocabularies. I felt like I was growing up in a bilingual household because none of my friends or their dad spoke like that. And I remember some of my best friends, we, we sat around one day and they were telling me uh, how their dad drank a lot of coffee and really strong coffee. And I said, well, my dad in the morning, he drinks mud. He drinks mud every day. And, and they were so amazed with mud. And I'm sure they went home and so told their parents, hey, Chucky's dad, he drinks mud every day. You know. So a lot of different vocabulary that I grew up with. And um, even when my children were growing up, I also woke them up the same way as, hey, Reveille, Reveille, all hands on deck. And they grew up that way for uh, four or five, six years, maybe. <laughs> um, it was just so instilled in me. And uh, it was kind of fun. And uh, I, I don't know. That's just how they grew up, too. <laughs> 